Hello guys, Nigel with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench. Hope you're all well. Hope you're uh, enjoying your new year and settling back into normality. Um, a little while ago, uh, as you probably know, I did a, in my Lancaster build, I did a review of some window masks for the 132nd scale Lancaster from Border Models. And in that review, I featured the ones from Kits World. Uh, I mentioned that I'd ordered them uh, in, in the video and somebody said, oh God, no way. You know, when I, when I actually did the review, lots of people came back and said they'd had a lot of trouble with them. But I thought I'd try them anyway. I wish I'd just sent them back and got my money back, to be honest, because they weren't very good at all, as you know. In the meantime, a couple of guys, one of them being Guy, <laughs> got in touch with me and said they'd used these art scale kit uh, masks and they were absolutely brilliant. So I thought I'd get in touch with Art Scale Kit to see if he would be interested in sort of teaming up and doing a review on the channel to see them in use on the kit. Um, and he was like, yes, brilliant, you know, great idea. Uh, so he said he would send me some. So um, Peter from Art Scale Kit, I'll put the address up now across the screen. Uh, you, you can buy directly from him, but there's suppliers uh, around the uh, around the world. Um, so yeah, he, uh, he said that basically, um, he would send me a set. So today I got some and here they are. And as you can see, we've got a rather large box and because of the customs and everything, uh, there has to be a receipt of the box's contents, as you know, taped to the front. So here is what we have. I'm going to cover my address up there. So here is what we have. And here is the second page of what we have and the third page and indeed the fourth page. So as you can see in this box, which weighs a ton, there is a lot. So thank you very much, Peter. I'm absolutely gobsmacked that you would want to send me all this stuff. And uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to have a look in the box and have a look and see basically what's in there. Um, and see what it's like and then going forward over the next few days weeks whatever we'll do some dedicated reviews or or trials or use the stuff in the build so that he sent i've had a look through there there's, there's all sorts there's decals masks tools accessories loads of stuff so what we'll do is you know we'll do specified defined reviews of the art of the items that we've got obviously the um lancaster will be the best test of all because now we can push forward with Lancaster. Uh, I also want to say that uh, Peter over at Artscale Kit has got the clear parts from my 124 scale Spitfire. So if you want some masks for your Airfix Spitfire, get in touch with him at the email address, or the address I've just put up, I'll put it up again now, get in touch with him and he will, um, he will no doubt come back to you and give you a pre-order or whatever because my parts are on the way to him for him to make a set for that. So, um, and it'll be great because apparently his masks are some of the best money can buy. I've never tried them. I don't know. But all I know is those ones from Kits World were vinyl and didn't lend themselves at all to all the compound curves on the turret that I tried them on. As you know, I, I showed you on screen. They just, no. Nah. So um, apparently these are much better. So uh, anyway, without further ado, I'm going to get this box un untaped and everything. And then we get onto the overhead camera. See what's in here. I, I know what's in here, but I don't know what it looks like. And uh, and then we'll go through there. And I'm sure there's going to be some stuff in here that I'm never going to need or use. So what we'll do is we'll do some art scale promoted giveaways, if you like, going forward. And, um, and as I say, we'll do reviews and stuff. So let's get to the overhead camera and see what's actually in this great big box. Right. So we have this box. Obviously, it's completely messing up the white balance. But it's just a plain white box with the... Uh, Art scale kit tape on there. In case you didn't catch it earlier, there's the uh, there's the details. There we go. So um, I haven't looked in here. This is the first time I've opened it. I've literally just cut the tape. And oh my God, we have a box full of stuff. We've got bottles. We've got a saw here. We've got another saw. My God, look at all this. We've got chains and oh right. So we're going to go through this. And as I said, we're going to have a quick look at all of it. And then anything, if you specifically want to see something tried, tested or whatever, put it in the comments below and I'll jot it down on a piece of paper. I'll make a list and then when it becomes appropriate, 
you know, if it's a proper test of something, like a test of a saw, then we'll do a test of a saw. But, you know, if it's um, if it's testing out some of the, something else that's in here, then obviously we can try it out on a particular model. So we're going to go through the top of the box. And here I have a bundle of masks. I also have a bundle of decals. So, or decals if you're in America. So here we have some masks. And I can see on here that they're lovely. Now I'm not going to open any of these until I get to one. Look at this. Look at that. Hey, <laughs> that's the uh, Lancaster one. So that's the one I'll open because that's the ones I'll be using. I'm going to get an Anson in 148 scale and I have a B24 in 132nd scale. So that's really cool. Now apparently these masks are amazing. I can see straight away they're Kabuki tape. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at these to see what the, in fact, no, we'll go through the box and then we'll come back to these afterwards. So if you want to see these and just you want to see these, then flick through to near the end of the video and these will be near on the end. If you don't want, if you want to see everything, then stick around. I'll try and keep it interesting. So we have a load of masks there. And then here we have a load of decals or decals. There's probably some masks in here as well because I think I saw more, more masks than I did decals in that list. So let's have a look what's in here. Right. So starting off, we have in 132nd scale, so that's going to be for the ICM kit, Bell AH1G Cobra, which I've just re reviewed in 144 scale. Um, and this is for the 114th Aviation Hel Helicopter Cavalry uh, in Vietnam, 1970. So you can see there we have all the different schemes. And um, I'm not sure if I'll ever do one of these, but we can see the decals there. And they look extremely nice. So you've got all the um, you've got the snakes there. You've got the stencil data down here. And it looks like we have one aircraft in here. It looks like we have enough here for one aircraft. But they do look very, very nice. We'll just have a look. I know I said I wasn't going to review anything, but we're just going to have a quick look at these decals to see how they look on the thickness and the register scale wise. And I did tell Peter, and he knows that I will be completely honest. So if these decals look awful, I will tell you they look awful. And if I say they're nice, then I think they look nice. And they look very nice. Now, one of the beauties of these, I believe he's told me, and we will have to do a test. You can see on here, like for instance, around this number four, you can see there is quite a lot of carrier film. Now, I believe the trick with these is once they are down, you basically go over with some lighter fuel, rub it and remove the film. Now, we've yet to see that and we'll actually do it. We'll do a test. It could only be the new range or something because it doesn't mention this in the instructions about wiping them over with lighter fuel. But that's something he's told me. So we will do a test on one that I'm not going to use. And we will see how that comes out. Not in this video, in another video. But basically, you can see we have very thin, but quite large carrier film on there. And it does appear that that's what it's, how you're going to be using them. So uh, so there we go. So I recommend give your, coat, give your model a gloss coat, put your decals down, and then we'll see how they look. We'll see how it works with the, uh, with the lighter fuel to remove it. But they do look very, very thin. Um, and the register looks lovely if you look around like if you look on this triangle there that's a good place to see if the register is out and it does look spot on um it looks very very nice indeed so uh yeah beautiful so we've got a full set of decals there and stencils um and then let's just see what sort of his instructions are like i mean most decal companies just give an a4 sheet of paper folded over oh, here we go he's got an advert in there and then he's got some different schemes for um Different aircrafts, we've got 33, 31, 32, 30. Uh, yeah, and that's, so these are the actual schemes. These are just an example of what they've got. Um, but it doesn't say anything on here about going over with lighter fuel. But I remember him telling me, you can go over with lighter fuel and remove the film, which you've seen me do before with enamel thinners on certain kits, but it doesn't work on all kits. So. Don't take my word for it. Be careful. So I'm going to put that away. I can put that away off camera, can't I, later on? Right, so in here we've got another Bell H1G, AH1G in 32nd scale. 
and these are from 1972 uh, and again very very similar layout stencils look exactly the same but again a really really nice set there um, could be mistaken for German couldn't it there but uh, yeah really really nice got Ta Pandora's box canned heat sound of silence and murder ink so you know the Americans like to uh, give everything a name didn't they so um, there we've got murder ink there we've got Pan sound of silence there we've got Pandora's box and that one is canned, canned heat. Canned heat, there we go. So there we are. So that's that set there. Then here we've got in 130 second scale again. So this is obviously going to be for the new Great War Hobbies kit. Although decals generally don't apply to a, a brand. They will generally fit because they're never that accurate. You know, that they're going to not, or a kit's not that far out that that decal isn't going to fit whether it be an academy tamiya icm whatever it is but this is going to be for the new great war hobbies kit isn't it? so here we've got the curtis hawk um pearl harbor defenders so that's going to be real early days um 7th of december 41 obviously so we've got uh george w welsh 15th pursuit group pursuit group haliwa field hawaiian islands at the time of the attack and then we've got here Kenneth M. Taylor, um, and that's obviously at the time of the attack. So we've got, that's part one. Okay, so there's your decal. So once again, we've got enough for one aircraft, no army, no US Air Force at that point. And then we've got our stencils down here. So that's really nice. And then here we've got part two. So this is going to be another two aircraft. So this is... Um, 78th Pursuit Squadron, Bellows Field, Hawaiian Islands at the time of the attack. That's with the big 300 on the side. And then here we've got the 19th Pursuit Squadron, 18th Pursuit Group, Wheeler Field, Hawaiian Islands at the time of the attack. Just flipping over there, we can see again we've got these lovely, very bold, very large decals. This is actually a kit I want to build. I've heard a lot about this kit being beautiful, so could well use these. But you can see on there we've got the stencils as well. We've got those lovely the 300 and the 284 in their stencil style with the, the lines in between. Again, they have this quite large carrier film around them, so I'm, I'm assuming they're designed to take the film off. Uh, here we've got um, Bell H1G Cobra, again from Vietnam. This is 1970 now. So this will be like the first set we had. Was this part one? No, that was... Okay, didn't, none of these said part one, so this one's saying part two. Uh, Kentor, so um, 3rd Aviation Cavalry Group Division, and 3rd Aviation Cavalry Division 3-4 Troop, and this is F Troop. So we've got some shark mouths now, so that's really cool. You can see them looking really nice. And oh yeah, great big shark. I have to get myself one of these now, just to use these decals, because they're beautiful. But um, And you can see again, we've got all the stencils down in there as well, so... Very, very nice. North American B-25J Mitchell stencils. Now, I did read on the website earlier, you actually get two sets in here. There's two lots. So you can see 11, 11, 12, 12A. It said enough stencils for two aircraft. So whether you've got two sheets or not, I don't know. But um, it could have been a misprint. This is in 132nd scale. Um, you can see they're absolutely gorgeous. Again, very well registered. Again, we have the large carrier film, and you can see we have instructions with all the numbers showing you exactly where they go. So that's all your stencils for your B25J from HK Models. I've got one of these in the stash, and every single bit of aftermarket you could possibly dream of to throw at it. <laughs> um, right, here we go. In 148 scale now, Curtis Mohawk, 1941-1943. Uh, Some really interesting colour schemes there. So this is RAF. Uh, Impal Burma 1943 again RAF Impal Burma 1943 uh, South African Air Force and South African Air Force so there's four schemes there very interesting looks like they didn't have any stencils unless of course there's a separate sheet for the stencils let's have a look but maybe they didn't have any uh, particularly if they were painted in the field they probably would have painted over all the stencils uh, yeah, so there's there's no other set second sheet in there. So that's basically the set for that. So you can see your fin flashes and your different colours and all your roundels and everything. Very nicely done. So that's very nice. 
more Kitty Hawk in 148 scale in their beautiful um, twin tan scheme. So this is a 450 squadron in Italy, 450 squadron in Libya, uh, third squadron, number three squadron in Libya, and third three squadron Foggia Italia, Foggia, Italy, Royal Australian Air Force. So they're all uh, Royal Australian Air Force. So um, I know there's a few of you Aussies out there will be going mad for these. Again, lots and lots of uh, basically standard roundels and everything. And then you've got some kangaroos with boxing gloves and stuff down there that you can see. So very nice indeed. Uh, Curtis Kitty Hawk Mark 1, Pacific Battlefield, Royal Australian Air Force uh, again. So here we've got some lovely schemes. A very interesting scheme on that tail. And I'm wondering how you're going to do that. Because the decals certainly aren't in. Let's have a quick look. Let's see if they suggest a mask or something for it. I'm not quite sure how you're going to get that interesting colour on the tail. Um, I guess you're going to have to do your own mask or brush paint. I'm, I'm wondering if that is actually flaking off paint and that's what they're trying to depict in here. That's probably what it is. It's chipped paint. So that's chipping. It's not a particular pattern they've painted on. It's chipped paint. So that was really interesting for you weathering, uh, weathering gurus out there. You'll love that one. Uh, here we go, part three. So here we've got um, Royal Australian Air Force part three. All these have the white tail with the variation of the tail on that on the last one. So um, again, 1945, piloted by Warrant Officer Eagle and then pilot P... P O D H Helsham. Um, I've got a pilot for the bottom one. But there you go, very, very nice indeed. Really, really nice. And then here we're back onto 48 scale now with the uh, Bell H 1G Cobras. So these are different ones again. So we've got the Hulk. Uh, we have the Hulk. We have Tim Ewan Ship. We have Arizona Gambler. Arizona Gambler. This one is the white and silver writing. And this one is all red writing, so you can see those there. But uh, very, very interesting schemes. And again, we've got two sets of stencils now. So it looks like when you get 48, you get the two sets of stencils. So there's enough in there to do two aircraft, I would think. Yes, because you've got, you've got enough to do two aircraft. So that's cool. So if you want to do two AH-1Gs, there's the set to get. And then this is part one in 148 scale. Uh, and these again are the shark mouth versions and again we've got enough to do two aircraft in there very nice and then here we've got bell h1g first and second squadron uh, 20th aerial rocket artillery it's got some little nose arts going on there so we've got oh this is like the 48 scale version of what we've already seen so this has got murder ink pandora's box sound of silence and canned heat and again we've got enough to do two because we've got the two lots of stencils. So you can see those there. Another Bell H1G for and 48 scale. And this again is the ones with all the snakes on. So you can see we've got all the snakes there. And again, enough to do two aircraft. So that's the same as we had in 30 second scale. Now we're on an Alpha Jet E. Uh, I'm not sure who did that kit, um, but basically French Air Force um, Alpha Jet. So you've got one with a lovely decorated tail. We've got the camouflage tail there, and then there's the plane tail, but with red tips. So you can take your choice there. And we've got some very tricky looking decals to go down there. Uh, so we've got Belgian version stencils and French version stencils. So it's obviously all well researched. So you've got French Air Force here and Belgian Air Force there. So obviously they put them in different languages. So there you go. There's that one with your three choices. If you want to see better images of all these, pop on over to the website and have a look at them there. Here we're back onto our, our Kitty Hawks now, or Curtis Hawks. So in 48 scale this time, Pearl Harbor. Again, same again, 284, 300, this time with 337. But these are all going to be Pearl Harbor on the 7th of December, 41. More AH-1Gs, more shark's mouths. And here we've got in 48 scale, B-25J Mitchell. I've got a couple of these in the stash. So... um. It'd be interesting to see these done and this is United States Army Air Force uh, ex-Netherlands 
Australia 1944. So it's got the black undersides and the green on top. Again, this has got the black underside, but done, done differently. Uh, and this again is United States of America. No, sorry, it's Royal Australian Air Force. Okay, sorry, they're ex United States Army Air Force. Okay, sorry. And they're now taken over by the Royal Australian Air Force. This is the trouble. You're doing reviews and you're trying to read everything and think about what you're saying and blah, blah, blah. And sometimes you get it wrong. And no doubt you'll tell me in the comments when I get it wrong. Uh, so there we go. So that one's cock and that one's coa. Hmm. Right. <laughs> uh, more B-25 missiles. Again, Royal Australian Air Force. So we've got um, a plain aluminium finish. And this one is in the um, olive drab over grey finish. Again, this is US Army Air Force and then turned into Royal Australian Air Force. And this one was US Army Air Force given over to the Australians. And again, you can see you've got some shark mouths there, which is very nice. So you'd have to get your stencils separately for those. Talk of the devil, there they are. Uh, and then here we've got some more B-25J Mitchells. Uh, and these are US Air Force ones. So this is in Corsica, Italy in April 44. Uh, Bitchin Mitch. And then this one here is White Lightning from Corsica, Italy, April 1944. So uh, you can see those. Very sort of standard looking B-25Js with their green and grey camouflage. So you've got Bitch and Mitch there and White Lightning there. And you can see the beautiful little logos there and you've got Bitch and Mitch there. Again, all the stars and bars and the everything there. So very nice indeed. And then we've got 148 scale B-25J stencils. And here uh, we've got stencils here. It looks like we've got one set, although I did see on the website it said two sets. So we'll have to have a look. It could be that there's enough here. See, there's only one five, there's only one six. So I can't see we've got enough there to do two models. Unless it's, okay, so you've got five or six. So there could be enough to do models. So that'd be two, three or four. Two, three or four. Right, so where there's more than one, on the model they actually double it up so there could be there is enough in there for two but you'll have to do two different versions so you can't do two exactly the same stencil wise but that's your stencils in 48 scale just want to go back and look at these 30 second scale yes exactly the same scaled up so you probably have got two i say probably you probably have got two lots in there so uh, worth looking at back onto our kitty hawks now 1942 to 1944 uh, again, Australian Air Force, and this time they're in 72nd scale, so they're tiny, and we've got three lots of stencils there, so do we now have enough for three aircraft? It certainly looks like we do. So there you go. Very nice indeed. I'm just looking here. We don't appear to have we've got the fin flash there, which is different than the other three of the wider white bar. We don't appear to have that in there. So that's unusual. We've got the CV and the O, so I guess you just have to mask it and spray some white paint in there. And then here we've got uh, again in 72nd scale, same again, got that one with the chip white tail. Again, three lots of stencils, so probably enough for three aircraft. So you could buy these and split it amongst your mates, and you could all build one. Um, again, here more in the Royal Australian Air Force, still uh, big on the Royal Australian Air Force today, aren't we? And there's all the different colours with all the lovely different spinners on them. So all very nice. And then more here in 172nd scale. A repeat of what we saw in 32nd and 48th, I think. And then here we've got the Alpha Jet uh, with some different schemes. Beautiful blue and yellow scheme there. Belgian Air Force, 75 years, 11 Squadron, Batbird 2, 1993. And then here we've got um, Rise of Norton Air Base, December 2019. Very nice indeed. And you can see here again, we've got one, two, we've got three lots of stencils. We've got only one pair of seat belts and one pair of instrument panels. But it looks like we've got three lots of stencils for Belgian and three lots for British, for uh, French. Very interesting. So well worth a look, guys. Get on over to the website and have a look. Um, I'm sure there'll be something there to take your fancy. So that's our decals and masks looked at. I'm hoping to find more masks in there because I saw in the yes there are more masks I saw on the inventory there were more than that right 
So, don't forget, at the end of this video, we're going to have a good look at these, the Lancaster ones. So, going into the box here, I've got a couple of bottles, and we have some, lucky these didn't leak, <laughs> um, thick instant glue and thin instant glue. We've just got the two, yeah, we don't have the medium, so these are going to be really nice to use, I'm guessing. We have the dispenser, and it's sealed, so that's good, so that extends the shelf life. A lot of super glues these days have the end open and unfortunately that does reduce the um the shelf life these were made on the 20th of the first 22 i believe so they could well be a year old already but they appear 14th of the second so these are like a year old already but they appear to be very good still because they're sealed so we will give those a go as you know my latest favorite is the um is the other stuff the black we'll see how we go here we've got some pipettes some very small pipettes uh, and i think he's thrown these in just to sort of show that there's a very wide range of tools and accessories and stuff so we've got five pipettes in there so they're the medium size and they're one milliliter per pipette you can see those there i can catch them in the light there's five there and then here we've got five of the medium size by three milliliters so obviously they've got a longer neck so they will hold more so there you can see we've got the medium and the large. And I did notice, I think they were like 1.7 euros. So they're cheap as chips. Um, here we have some chains. So these are going to be great for all you guys into your military, your ships or whatever. And we've got all the different sizes here. So should we go from the smallest to the top? So these are fine. These are medium. They're gross. <laughs> I'm sure they're not gross. Um... And they're coarse, so we've got right. So these are the fines. So these are a 0.4 millimeter diameter wire, it's a 2.1 millimeter length link, and a 1.7 millimeter width link. You can see there just the sort of size they are. If I put them next to my scalpel blade, it'll give you an idea of the size. You can see there they're really, really nice. I actually tried a while ago to find some chain for a project I was working on. And I really, really struggled. I've got it here to my left hand side. I bought loads of chain from China and I never got the actual size I wanted. And I know in here I'm looking, I think this is about the size I was looking for. So the medium is a 0.3 millimeter uh, diameter wire. It's a 2.8 millimeter length and a 1.4 millimeter width. So this is really interesting because you've got the fine one here has a... I think there's something wrong here because this one's saying 0.4 and this one's saying 0.3. We can see on there that that wire in that one is clearly thicker than that one. So what I'll do is I'll look at these again, I'll measure them up and I'll tell you the, um, the actual sizes of them. And I'll also inform Peter because it looks like he's been given false information there or there's a bit of a misunderstanding. But you can see that that one is, is definitely, I'm not going to mention the sizes anymore because I'm going to measure them. Um, but that one there, you can see. In fact, I'll measure them now, and then I'll come back. Okay, so we have the... Uh, I have, I've measured them out now, and I'll get in touch with Peter, and I'll tell him. Basically, the fine has a 035 millimeter wire diameter. It's 1.6 millimeters. It says 1.7 on here, so it's probably about right, but 1.7 millimeters. But the, the actual wire diameter is slightly smaller at 0.35. And then the medium one, which, as you can see, is obviously... I can get that to come away which we can see is obviously coarser than the, than the fine. Uh, that one has a wire diameter of 0.45, a link length of 2.6, and a link width of two millimeters. So that's gonna be better for like your 35th scale tank uh, chains and stuff, I think, from memory. And then this one here, we've got the chain gross, um, which is, I think, like a, it's, it's, it's less large than the coarse. Uh, but it says here the wire diameter is 0.45. I've measured it at 0.55. The link length is 4 millimeters, and the length width is 2 millimeters. So as you can see, it's a very nice chain for model ships there, for anchor chains, because of the shape. It looks very accurate for model ships. And then this one here, finally, is the course. And this one, although it's displayed as kind of a square section, it is a lot more of a sort of oval length uh, link. But it's 0.44 wire diameter, 3.8 in length and 2.7 in width so you can see that one there you can see the shape of that one 
to do that's the chains as i say i will get in touch with peter and uh, he will quite possibly change his website um then moving on here we have some saws now these look very interesting indeed as you know i have this saw here which is the jrc and as you can see i've been using this one it's got a broken blade I never worry about it when the blade breaks because it makes a wonderful scriber. But they do break very, very easily. Apparently, these are a lot tougher. Um, now, this is actually coming with an Allen key as well. So we'll take, we'll get one out of the package and have a look at it. We'll do, an, in fact, we'll do another video on the saw. We'll do some tests of them back to back because we've also got a lot of different saw blades to check. So what I like about these, you've got a standard saw blade here, which is, as you can see, the, the saw is running up through the center. And this one is isometrical. You can see the saw is off center and that is really handy, very handy. I know that on many occasions I've been wanting to cut something sort of, you know, say I'm into a corner here, say there's something there and I want to cut here. It's very difficult to sort of get in there. Whereas with that one now, you'll be able to hold it and get in there. So that'd be really cool for getting in and cutting stuff. And also if you're cutting, you know, if you've got something held vertically and you're cutting low down, it's going to be really, really handy rather than having your hand underneath. So um, very, very good for that. You've also got a plastic handle, which is going to be a bit grippier than the wooden one. But I doubt the difference is very much at all. Uh, this one, as I say, is held in with Allen screws. Um, let's just quickly get, get this out and have a look. Where's my really old Tamiya cutters, the old chipped ones I used for staples. So we'll just get this one out and have a look. In case you don't come back for the full test review, we will have a look at this and get rid of that staple. And yeah, you can see here there's another massive benefit with this. We've basically got screws going into a, um, a paddle here. Whereas on this one, the screws stick out a lot more. So... It's, it's very it's much flatter you can see the actual cross section of the saw itself compared to the JLC one it's a lot slimmer so that's really nice and also a couple of times in fact I did it very recently if you go back and watch I did it on my um, Lancaster build and I actually knocked the part I think it was the rear turret with the back of this screw and it scratched it and the only reason it didn't matter is because it was the back of the turret is actually painted black whereas with this one it probably wouldn't have scratched it because they're they're button head allen bolts, so that's really nice. So we've got here a, a fairly coarse blade and a fairly fine blade, but we'll get into blades in a minute. So this is the ultra smooth and extra smooth isometric. So really, really handy. I will definitely be using these a lot slimmer in section, as I say, and they come with the Allen key as well, which is a nice touch. So uh, yeah, very, very nice. I very much look forward to testing those out because we have here next up, we have a boatload of blades to show you. And some of these I've seen on the website are absolutely stunning. So here's our bag of blades. So here we have ultra and extra smooth. So this is a 43 and 70 tooth blade. So there's one blade in there. Um, designed for very fine work. Package contains one saw. So you can see we've got a fairly coarse blade on one side and smooth on the other. It's 43 and 70 teeth. I don't think these say the number of teeth, but you can see that one side is about is about the same as the coarse on here, and the other side is coarser. So that's handy because when you're cutting and resin and stuff, cutting resin mold plugs off, these are a bit um, a bit fine. Uh, so that's going to be really handy for that. And then here we've got a 70-70 teeth, so that's going to be for your general working with plastic. Here we've got 43, 43. So what I may well do is load that one up in this handle and use that for cutting off my resin plugs, because um, they, you know, it, it, it is nice to have a coarser blade. Because with with resin, you know, you cut it wet to obviously reduce the dust, but it does tend to clog these finer the finer blades. So it'd be nice to have the coarser blades. Here we've got the radius ends. Now these are really handy for cutting, sort of into corners we, we will do a test of these and i will show you how i use them but um i've got i've had i've still got some of these uh from another manufacturer and they're really handy other than they're stainless steel and once you bend them that's it they've had it whereas these are more, they're they're flexible but then they will snap 
uh, but they don't bend as it were and deform um, and you, if you're coming into a corner it's really handy like say you're cutting a, a square panel out it needs to be a fairly large panel it's no good if you're trying to cut a tidy little panel out but you can sort of straight stroke the blade up and down rather than sawing backwards and forwards you can kind of do this with it because you've got that cutting edge on the front which is really handy when you're coming into corners and stuff so really really handy there and then we've got an ultra smooth um, razor saw uh, Batman so this is really cool uh, and I can see this is going to be really handy for when you're trying to get into areas where you're you know, you've got a raised area and you're cutting around it it's going to be great for that it's probably awesome for scribing as well and also when you're if you're cutting a nose off an aircraft for instance on a panel line with a straight blade let's find something straight it's obvious if you're cutting something round with a straight blade you've got a very small area of contact so you've got like only one or two teeth to guide you and and to stay in the panel line whereas with something like this when you get in there you can see that you're going to have a lot better control and you can sort of flow the blade around the around the panel line whereas with a flat blade it's going to be a lot more easy to jump out because remember it's cutting so it doesn't want to follow line; it just wants to cut through the plastic but with more contact area you've got more area on the sides which are going to keep the blade in its groove rather than having it jumping out the groove so we will do a definite test with those and then here finally this is called the octopus and you can see that one has got this is going to be absolutely awesome for doing into small round areas um, like for example if you've got a teardrop molding on a wing and you're trying to cut it without damaging anything around it you know you can go across the top but when you get to the bottom you want to be able to get around the corner and also from cutting inside so if you're coming up from inside a panel and trying to get into the corner that's going to be really really good for that so uh, yeah really looking forward to testing those out and I will be using them they're quite flexible as you can see um, so I'll be ordering some of these and buying some replacements because I'm bound to break them but uh, and yeah really really looking forward to testing those they look amazing here we got some oh, tell it's lead wire it weighs a ton um, Peter has sent me some of his lead wire that he does nice to see that it comes like this I buy my stuff from the well-known British company and it often comes wrapped in a coil and, and then the, especially the thinner stuff when you unwrap it it all gets entangled you went to a bird's nest but this has all come nicely looped um, so here we have lead wire round 0.2 mil diameter 250 millimeter length so that's going to be really handy for super detailing and usually it's quite bright normally the lead wire I've had is quite dull you must remember if you're using this um, make sure you wash your hands um, wash your hands afterwards because the lead will get on your fingers you'll see your fingers are slightly turned dark wear some gloves whatever but make sure you wash your hands and uh, don't go having food and stuff after you've been using these and then we've got here some lead wire this is 0.3 mil diameter so it's going to be really handy and again that's a 250 millimeter length and we've got 30 pieces in there here we have a 0.4 millimeter diameter and that's again 250 millimeters in length 28 pieces 0 0.5 250 length 24 pieces so you can see we're getting up there now 0 0.6 getting quite heavy now 250 millimeters 20 pieces 0 0.7 250 millimeters and uh, we have 16 pieces so it's obviously done by weight and then we've got the 0 0.8 250 millimeters of 16 pieces we have round 0 0.9 uh, and we have 14 pieces okay great if, if you're new to the hobby and you want to do super detail and the beauty of lead wire is you can bend it and place it where you want it to go it won't spring if you try and use copper or stainless steel you've got to bend it and then it'll always spring back this you can just put a bit down there but a drop of super glue push it around there it'll stay a drop of super glue push it around, and it won't keep trying to spring back on you all the time so that's the beauty of using lead wire the downside to it is very soft so you have to be very careful if you pick it up with tweezers and manipulate it you will squash it the advantage to that is if you want to make something like a handle like a toolbox handle where you've got a round piece of tubing and it's rolled and bent and flattened on the end lead wire is your friend because you can get a piece of lead wire cut it to length bend it around something bend it back up so you've got that shape and then squash the ends just push a piece of metal on the top the back of your knife blade 
like your knife handle or whatever just push it down squash it and then you've got that sort of typical handle like you've got on the side of a jeep so perfect for that right so here we've got half round lead wire this is, i saw this on the invoice i'm really interested to see what that's like that's going to be really handy for sort of um detailing where you don't want it sort of right out on the surface you want to sort of represent something that's in the surface built in or whatever but uh yeah really really good it says here suitable for internal structures um carbon fiber wings and fuselages so yeah it's a uh, it's gonna have a flat on one side and a radius on the other so really really nice one of those shapes that's not impossible to make so you've got 0.6 by 0.4 length is 140 millimeters we've got nine pieces and then here we've got some flat lead wire so that's gonna be really nice pre-flattened for you so that's wonderful for seat belts so that's going to be 0.2 thick by one millimeter wide so a 70 second scale that's going to be 72 millimeters wide so that's perfect for a sort of wide three inch harness uh, in 70 second scale so um really cool um yes yeah, so that's going to be like yes that's just under three inches that's what i was thinking and then here we have the uh, 0.2 by 1.5 so um 1.5 in 30 second scale is going to be one and a half of 32 which is 48 so that's four so that's going to give you a two inch wide belt in 48 in 30 second scale so that's really nice you can see it's it's just flat lead really cool uh 0.4 by one millimeter didn't we have that one that's 0.2 so that's going to be the thinner one that's going to be better for your belts and then here we've got 0.8 by 0.55 so that's probably going to be oh this is half round again sorry so that's your half round and then here we've got more half round one at point one in point seven so there's 14 pieces there and then finally we've got half round here and this is 1.2 so that's going to be like a 1.2 half round lead wire so if you haven't got the lead that you need in that little bundle there then you need something else so really cool so thank you peter for those we will be using those on a future detailed build and then finally well not finally because we look at Lam Lancaster masks we've got these masks here and this is a great big bundle so we saw these at the beginning of the video this the Lancaster the Liberator and the Avro Anson so these are the bigger sheets and um, now I'm not so scared of doing an Anson I want to do an Avro Anson I know you guys want me to as well so here we have Spitfire Mark 9 in 30 second scale for T Tamiya Okay, so we can see on there we've got internal and external masks um, for the canopy. So these are canopy masks only. There's nothing else in there. It's just canopy and windscreen. Here we have the Gloucester Gladiator Mark 1, the ICM kit or Revell kit. I've actually got that. And we have in here we have the exterior and the interior. And we have wheels as well so that's really handy i've got that kit we have the hawker hurricane mark 2b just bought that one and this is one-sided so that's going to be your wheels your hubs you've got the viewing panels through the bottom and i'm guessing that's going to be the landing lights there you can see there's the display of what you're getting and then here's the external panels of your canopy so as you can see there's that many panels and none of them are square and believe me i have this kit and the and the glazing go back and look at my review you can hardly even feel it you can just about see it you can hardly feel the edges so i don't think you're going to get away with masking it yourself an aftermarket masking set is the way to go so there's the one-sided and then we've got the two-sided here the double-sided which is interior and external so you can mask the inside and the outside spray the inside with your um, interior green color and the outside with your camouflage we also again have the wheels the tires and we have the landing lights and those vision there's, there's two glazed panels in the cockpit floor so the pilot could look down and see that his undercarriage is down so um so he's got four of those and obviously you've got two of them and you've got the inside and the outside you get all four in that one as well but you're only getting the outside of the canopy so there's your hurricane so we have 135th scale um junkers 87 stuka uh, for the border model kit as you know i've already done this kit and you probably i'm not sure if he even does it but you need for this model you need interior and exterior masking because the kit as you know i voted it my best kit of the year 
um, the, the canopy is actually correctly moulded with some of the framing on the inside and some of the framing on the outside. So you need interior and exterior masking. So if somebody's offering you a masking set that only has exterior, don't bother because you can't mask up the interior. There's a few, go back and look at my build, there's a few frames that are actually interior masked. When I built mine, none of this was available because when I built mine, the kit wasn't even available. And um, I had to mask it myself and boy, oh boy, was it fun. If I was doing it again, I would definitely use those. Here we have the Airfix Buccaneer. This is double sided for the um, S2 CD 148 scale Buccaneer from Airfix. That's a kit I'd like to build, but I don't want to pay for it because it's too expensive. Uh, but here we've got double sided. So we've got, um, no, we haven't got double sided. Yes, we have. So we've got inside and outside. But they're not actually marked on here, interior, exterior. That's a bit weird, but yeah, we've got the wheels as well. So we've got our main landing gear. And I'm guessing these small one are for the front. Okay, so here we have another double-sided set. So this is for the Airfix Spitfire Mark 12 in 148 scale. So we've got exterior and interior, and we've got our wheels as well. So common theme going on here. We have our Spitfire F Mark, uh, what's that, 18 in 148 scale from Airfix. Again, exterior, interior, and wheels. We have the B26C50 Invader, double-sided, from ICM in 148 scale, so that's exterior and interior. Okay, uh, we don't have wheels, so there we go. So you have all the exterior and interior canopy masking, but no wheels. We have the 148 scale B25J, Mitchell for the glaze, the glaze nose one in 148 scale, not 30 second. Getting a very dry throat here, guys, been talking so much. Right, so we've got the B25, this is double sided. HK models 148th. I will be giving this away because I will not be building that kit. Uh, and this is the interior and the exterior. And then here we have the 109G6 from Tamiya in 148th scale. We've got exterior, interior, and wheels. Did we have it wheels on that one? No, it's just that's just all your canopy. And if you want to have a go at masking that yourself, if you just look at the number of masks you're getting in that, yeah, have fun. <laughs> so I would get I would advise getting these. Uh, and then this is for the 148th scale 109, and we've got wheel masks in there as well. Here we have one-sided Mark 1, 2, and 3 uh, Sunderland in 172nd scale. And it looks like we have wheels. Yes, we have wheels and glazing. And you can see the number of masks in there, so you have fun with that one as well. If you don't want to buy a masking set, then just, you know, just spend three days masking it. Um, but there we go. Uh, and that's that's one side of that's for the special hobby kit. I actually have that one, so I won't be giving those away. This is for the KI 20 or the Key 21 1B Sally in 172nd scale from ICM. And this is one sided, and you also get wheels. Wow. Okay. Just for, for starters, look at the size of the masks. There's my hand. There's a scalpel, just as so you can give you a comparison of how small they are. And then when you turn it over and you look at how many there are. Yeah, you're going to want to get a masking set for that, aren't you? <laughs> um, and then we've got the last two here. We've got a Supermarine Seafire in 172nd scale. And this is for the special hobby kit. And this is going to be... You've got wheels. So I'm guessing... I'm guessing this is going to be a camera light and the formation light or the ID light. This is going to be your canopy and then these are obviously your wheels at the bottom and they're not showing you them. Um, and then finally we've got the Airfix. I'm assuming this is 170 seconds ago. Yeah, it doesn't say but it's M72065 so I'm assuming it's a 70 second scale kit. Gloucester Meteor F8 from Airfix. And you can see very simple little set. We don't have any wheel masks in there that you can see on there. It's telling you to use masks all over the panel. This is what these manufacturers need to do. Rather than trying to make a mask in one piece to go over compound curves, make a frame and then the modeler can use mask all. Because otherwise it just all peels up because it doesn't want to stay down. <clears throat> it's rod. So um, there you go. So that there's the little set of masks for that one. I won't be building that one, even though I live in Gloucester. I won't be building that one. So that's another one that's uh, going to be given away on a ask an art scale distribution um, 
promoted giveaway sometime in the future. So as I promised, here we go. So this is the set of Lancaster masks. I'm going to open these because I'm going to be using them. And these are for the border model, not the HK models, the border model. 132nd scale Lancaster, originally wingnut wings. And what have we got in here? So we have one, two, three sheets of masks. We have some lovely instructions, which in Kits World Kit didn't give us. And it's showing us where all the pieces go individually. And then the actual masks themselves, as you can see, are numbered. So basically you'll come along, uh, let's get something that I'm not going to use. Um, 58 and 59. I can't see it for looking. I can see 57. Here we go, 58 and 59. So I guess what I'm not going to use. I just want to see how, how easily they come up. So just give the paper a bend. And you can see there, grab the tweezers, and we can see they come up beautifully. They are very, very sticky. So they're going to go down really nice. And you're going to push them into the edge with a cocktail stick or whatever. You'll burnish them in, and they're going to cut beautifully. Um, I'm just looking at this now. This has got some scratching on the surface. I hope it's not cuts. Let's just peel that one up again. No, it's not. OK, I saw a line going across here. It's like it's been scratched with something. It's probably just rubbed up against something in the packaging. I don't know if you can see it. There's a line going between there, between the 58 and the 81. It's not a cut. Uh, so, yeah, you can see very, very nice indeed. Very, very thin. We've got the little cutouts in there. The little cuts to go around those tiny little bits. If you know the Lancaster, you know it's got those tiny bits, which is why I haven't cut my own masking. You know, at the end of the day, I would have come along and put masking tape on and cut it myself. But with those little tiny nubbins in there, it was not impossible. I tried, but there's no way. And we've got wheel masks for it there as well, which I don't need to use because I've already done the wheels. But I have got two of these kits, so let me see if I can reuse them. But uh, yeah, we've got here, we've got on the instructions, we have the actual part number. So that's the clear sprue one, part number 13. And then you've got all the masks going in here. And where it's purple, you have to use some masco. You can use um, Humbrol masco. You can use the Ammo liquid mask. You could use the Viejo one, which mine went off in the bottle, so I wouldn't probably recommend that one. We have this one here. Where is it? There's this one here from VMS liquid mask. I'm sure if you look on the Art Scale website, I'm sure they sell their own liquid mask. Well, not their own, but somebody else's. Um, you can use any liquid mask on there, and that's basically what you do. And this is what I'm saying. You see this one here, you've got... Um, I'm just trying to see. This is on the upper turret. So you've got 52 and 53. So you've got two pieces there. So it's very thin around the section there. So you can get one to go in, and then you get the other one to go in. And then you have them nice and tight in the corners. It doesn't matter if it wrinkles up a bit in this area here, because you're going to put mask all in there, and it will seal it off. So uh, very, very nice indeed. And you will see me using these in my build of my 132nd scale Lancaster. So if you want to see how they go, come and have a look. I would suggest, I did notice on the website, everything there that I saw said in stock. With this one, it said five of 15 or five items. So obviously it's a very, very popular set because... As far as I know, it's all that's out there that actually works. So um, get over to the website. As you can see there, www.artscale.eu. I believe you can get these on Hannant's. I believe if you're in the UK. But uh, check your local supplier, whatever you like to use. If not, artscale.eu. It's going to cost nothing to post because it's going to go in a normal envelope. Um, and I do know, I will just say finally before I go, I was in the live stream last night, Tuesday night, uh, with Sue, Ice Queen 7, and um, Lucas was in there. Uh, and Lucas is a keen model, he does a lot of 144 scale stuff. And he actually said, unprompted, I didn't even mention this was coming, he actually said he recently bought a package from Art Scale 
It was damaged in the post and their customer service, he said, was excellent. So that's worth remembering. So um, there we go. So I'm going to put this one away. And then one day, one day in the very near future, we will use this on our Lancaster. And I will show you how I get on with it. And I am absolutely positive. It's very thin. It's kabuki tape and it's very sticky. I am 99.999 recurring percent sure this is going to be absolutely fine. So thanks for watching that, guys. Uh, I know it's been a bit long winded, but there's a lot of stuff to go through. And I wanted to just cover everything in one video. If you want to know more about any of the items or you want to see any more detail about them, you know, like what the squadron codes of a decal set were or how the glue works or whatever, just put in the comments down below and I will make sure I cover it for you in a future video or videos. OK, thanks for watching. Bye for now. As I say, get on over to the website, have a look, buy something. Um, and make it worth his while he's sending me all this stuff. I can't believe he sent all this. It's absolutely amazing. So thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.